Hey everybody, my name's TSW, thank you very much for checking out my Heroic Shandu Pan Monastery Guide. If you do enjoy this video, I recommend thumbing it up as it helps me out tremendously as a small time YouTuber. So let's start off with our first boss here, Goo Cloudstrike. I'm going to go through his abilities, tell you what they are, and hopefully this can help you uh, get through the Heroic Instance that is Shandu Pan Monastery. So let's start off with the Invoke Lightning. This is a non interruptible cast spell that Goo Cloudstrike will cast on a random player in the party, which will deal damage to them and anyone within 5 yards. So you might be thinking, okay, we'll just stay more than 5 yards apart from each other. Well, it might be better if you stay more than 10 yards, because there is also a static field which he'll summon, which is a big circle of lightning on the floor, dealing nature damage to anyone within 10 yards of its circle. So you see behind the boss, there is one of the static fields on the ground. This will be dealing 60,000 nature damage every second to anyone caught within its radius. They only last 15 seconds, but we get about two, three. You might even get a fourth one, but they're very obvious visually, so it's not hard to get out of them. So when you start to hit phase two, we're gonna be met with the Azur Serpent. He will glide down, he will be cleavable, and then um, he will then use his uh, Charging Soul ability on Goo Cloudstrike, making Goo Cloudstrike immune. I really like this phase because the serpent, as a serpent, has the um, the debuff that he will place on everybody in the party called Magnetic Shroud, which absorbs 50,000 healing and also deals 6,000 damage every second. So you can't be healed and you're taking damage. Well, when you're overhealed, the 50k absorb, you will then um, expel all that healing, the 50,000, in AoE form to everyone within 20 yards. So I really like this mechanic, how you can't be healed, but when you are overhealed, the 50k, you then um, spend that heal on everyone within uh, 20 yards. So I'd recommend spamming the tank, so you know, obviously the tank can be kept alive, and then just um, healing, uh, uh, just single target healing um, for a lot of um, health individually until you get around everybody, just so you uh, get the 50,000 healing AoE uh, going all the time. Um, he also has a, a lightning breath, which will deal a lowish amount of damage to anyone caught in front of the Azur Serpent. So obviously if you damage, just stay away from in front of him. In phase three now, uh, Goo Cloudstrike comes back from his meditation where he was immune and he'll be dealing more damage based on the amount of HP he has uh, had taken off him. This is only active in phase three, so don't think you're gonna be taking loads and loads of damage in phase one, but basically, um, yeah, just use your cooldowns as and when in phase three. This is the, uh, the nuke phase, the big healing and the big uh, defensive cooldown phase because he does damage to everyone in the party. And as you can see, uh, we're all just lower than half HP um, but yeah, if you're lesser geared or you know, perhaps you haven't seen this video, you can get caught off guard and you can have fatalities. So let's start off with the second boss, go through his abilities, Master Snowdrift. Another three phase encounter, we have ourselves a uh, aggressive first phase, we have a spell damage second phase and we have a defensive third phase from Master Snowdrift. So we're going to start off by going through his abilities. We're going to see Fist of Fury, that does a lot of damage. As you see, it's hitting you for 65, 70,000 damage very, very quickly. If you do not avoid this, you will die unless you pop some massive cooldowns. He's now doing his Tornado Kick, which as you can see is a knockback. Try and kite him away from the rest of the party. It's no good if you run straight to your healers in range because everyone will take damage and everyone will be knocked back. And if you don't move away immediately or use cooldowns, you can be caught off guard and die. Uh, very similar to the Fist of Fury, it is an ability that will kill you. So this is phase one, um, a really cool uh, first phase, it's, it's re relatively deadly, I mean if you don't use any sort of cooldown and you're caught in the Fist of Fury and you take five ticks or more, you're, you are going to die, that is going to destroy your health. So here we go into phase two, where he's going to be summoning several um, copies of himself. So this is like his like ag agility phase. I'm not quite sure what it's meant to be. Obviously, he's some sort of like monk guy. He's going to be summoning uh, balls of fire and balls of arcane. The red balls being balls of fire, which do a medium amount of fire damage to anyone caught within them. They travel relatively slowly, so they are um, reasonably easy to avoid. But bear in mind that uh, you know they do damage as well as balls of arcane, which do arcane damage. So he's like uh, duplicated himself uh, three times here, one of which will be the, the real uh, Master Snowdrift and two will just be copies that die very, very quickly. The copy that doesn't die quickly isn't the copy, that's the actual Master Snowdrift and that's how you damage him through this phase. And then we will finally get into the third and final phase which is a defensive phase where he will have a Tornado Slam which is 
a very uh, hard hitting ability potentially it does 30% of your maximum HP as physical damage so you can uh, basically be one shot if you're below 30% HP in this third and final phase. He also has a defensive stance which means that he will, oh sorry, a, a parry stance is what it's called but it's a defensive stance which will mean that every ability will miss and if you do attack him whilst in this phase if you're ranged he'll leap towards you and deal a medium amount of physical damage or if you're in melee range he will just turn around and slap you dealing a um, again a medium amount of physical damage. So uh, yes that was Master Snowdrift. Uh, between this and the next boss, um, uh, what's it called, Shah Violence, there is some pretty tough trash, but once you get through it, um, we are now going to progress on the third boss, Shah of Violence. So Shah of Violence has to be one of the quickest bosses in all of Mr. Pandaria, so let's get through its tactics quickly. He's got a disorientating smash ability, which is like a rogue's blind. I will be out of uh, action for about four seconds. It does a medium amount of damage and also aggro is then uh, put on the next person on threat so be aware of that. He also has a smoke blades ability which is a whirlwind that does a low amount of damage every one second and reduces the chance to crit by everyone in the party by 100% but every time you hit the boss the 30 second duration is reduced by 5 seconds so for me within about 5 seconds the uh, 30 second debuff was gone. He also has a Shah Spike on a random player, giving them a knockback and an enrage at low HP. His attack speed is increased by 50% for 30 seconds. I'm glad that he doesn't have too many abilities because there would not be enough time for me to go through them all without having the boss encounter video in the background being shown multiple times. So that is Shah of Violence, a very quick boss and uh, very easy as well. Uh, so let's press on to our final boss. So. Just before we get to the final boss, this is some pretty difficult trash. There are two hateful essences in the background. You want to kill those first because they continuously spawn ads. And then I'm just pillaring out of line of sight the ads. I also have my mocking banner down. Um, it's pretty simple when, once you know what to do. But if you do not know uh, how to deal with these ads, it can be very, very hard. So let's press on with our final boss, who is none other than Tarazul. The first thing you're probably going to notice when you get into combat with him is the hatred bar. It's this bar in the centre of the screen near the bottom that is filling up with red. This is the hatred bar. Whenever you get this bar to fill up, you'll get a debuff called Haze of Hatred. Physical damage will be increased by 20%, but your chance to hit will be reduced by 90%, and you'll also take 25% less healing. So, generally speaking, uh, getting this bar full and getting the debuff Haze of Hatred is not a good thing. How do you get the bar to uh, go down? You have a button, the big button below the bar, called Meditate. Once you click this button you will not be able to move for about 4-5 to five seconds but after that duration your hatred will all be gone. You'll see me in a second for a leap out, or maybe I won't hear a leap. Um, I've push my meditate button, I can't move, and now my meditate is gone. Obviously if you're the healer, it's probably the most important um, role to get this correct, because obviously you don't want to do it when people are low, but for the tank, assuming you've got aggro, it's easy. So you'll see uh, a few of the mechanics happening now. He's got these uh, this, will, this uh, spiraling shadow things <laughs> circling around him. This is called Ring of Malice. It's a ring of shadows that will surround the boss for 15 seconds and will deal shadow damage. Uh, not too notable how much damage it does, but it will reduce your movement speed by 80% if you are caught in it. So if you don't have any sort of heroic leap or a priest won't um, pull you out, you can potentially get caught in it for um, a long duration, in which case then the damage obviously does keep going. He also has a uh, rising hate ability, which does 15,000 shadow damage to several targets. He just like spews out a load of shadow damage. He also has a Shah Blast, which is a knockback that does 65,000 shadow damage, but it only is given to those of you who are in the Ring of Malice when it's active. So like I say, you will get caught in the Ring of Malice and it will slow you down, but after you know a while, you will get pinged out, dealing lots of shadow damage to yourself. Um, there's also a Gripping Hatred, which is uh, what brings us into the pools of shadows, basically the big purple pools of shadow on the floor. This does damage, obviously, but you don't need to kill them. You do have the option to kill them. 
but in all honesty it is not required by any means and the grip of hate is basically a 60 yard range grip which will bring all the party members into the pools of shadow just get out of the shadows use your meditate ability when your hatred is going up make sure you don't get the debuff haze of hatred and it's a very straightforward boss very fun the mechanics are all very very cool in my opinion and uh, this has been my video for Shando Pan Mo uh, Monastery Heroic Guide. If you do enjoy this video, again, please uh, thumbs up. It helps me out so much, as does any great feedback in the comments below. And uh, yeah, if you're not subscribed already, you can click the subscribe button. And additionally, check out any of my other Heroic videos. I've been TSW. I will see you guys later. Thanks for watching.